I love Guilty Gear. You love Guilty Gear. We all love Guilty Gear. But why? Some may say the music, the visuals, the combos, but fuck all that shit. Uh, no, wait, actually, please, please keep it. What I love is the title of this video. We're talking about resources, yes! Now, when thinking about what you love and why you love a game, the meter probably isn't the first thing that comes to mind. It might not even be the last thing that comes to mind, but this bar right here makes or breaks a game most of the time because it changes the way that we engage with the systems at play. I want to talk about what I personally believe to be the best meter in any game. Guilty Gear XR Rev's meter, Tension. But in order to talk about how good this meter is, we should probably first talk about a bad meter. Oh god. This meter sucks. It serves one purpose. There's no decision making when you use it. It's either a whiff punish, or a combo ender, or if it's a super that has invincibility, it's a sign of a real American. Grand Blue also has the special meter, in which every move has a cooldown, kind of like Rising Thunder, but these two mechanics not being tied means that they don't interact outside of Go, me more damage, me make more meter. This meter sucks, but it's bad because it has one purpose. This wouldn't be bad if it was complex in other ways, like the way that it builds or the requirements that you need to get to it, but it's so simple that DSP couldn't fuck it up. There's no management, there's no choices, and the applications are so online that you don't really make decisions with this meter, you more make responses. Now then, let's look at a better meter, but still not a great one. 3S, I like this game a lot, please do not hurt me for talking shit on 3S, you've had 21 years to come to terms with the fact that this game has problems. This meter is thoroughly in the okay camp. A lot of this game will end up revolving around meter. Supers in this game are huge, but they're also very frequent. That's purpose one, but it's also tied to EX moves. And that's it, that's that's the whole set of purposes. However, this isn't necessarily a bad thing because the two mechanics share the same resource, creating layers in decision making. Here, depending on your character, meter can either be a tool to break neutral or to break a player's will to live. Different characters have different applications for their meter. For example, Ken's EX Tatsu will get you out of any corner like it never existed, but also has a pretty insane super alongside it. Chun-Li? It, it's literally used for supers. I don't think I've ever seen a Chun player use, use an EX move. I don't think it exists. Some characters, there will be a small amount of complexity, and some characters will have to make as many choices with their meter as I have brain cells, aka none. This might initially be seen as a bad thing, but also some players might not want to have complicated choices with their meter, so I'd say that personally, it successfully appeals to both groups of players who want complicated choices and those who don't. The way the meter builds is also pretty nice in my opinion. Now, some people might not like this, and so a big personal preference sign is going up right about here. When whiffing most moves that aren't lights, they give you a small amount of meter. Give someone enough space, and if they don't want to push an advantage or break out of a corner, they can just start pressing. What I like about this is that you almost create a new timer when you've given them too much space without pressuring them enough, because fuck me, you don't want to let Chun-Li get bar for free. It creates a new threat and makes it so that characters that can't play from full screen meaningfully with things like fireballs can still apply pressure, but they're threatening them with re resource building. So an okay meter to me holds multiple purposes. The issue with this one is that there comes a point where you've got so much meter that some of the decision making just stops existing and depending on your character, this meter management bullshit that I just talked about might be really important because you've got lots of choices, or your Chun and Super Go Burr. Alrighty, now that we got them out of the way, let's talk about the big boy tension. Our daddy taught us not to be ashamed of our meter. Especially since they're such good size and all. Meter 1, boring as fuck, it's got one use. Meter 2, two uses, alright. This meter, eight, eight uses. uses. Three of them are tied to one action and are variations of the same thing, but they have very different applications, so I'm going to be counting the Roman cancels as different things. Fuck you if you think that's a problem. Now, there's a lot of choices here, but what I think I like most about it is that whilst it's not an exclusively aggressive meter, your way of getting the most of it is through aggression. Let's talk about building meter. Whilst playing defensive with things like just blocking can get you a pretty healthy amount of tension, everything else rewards you like crazy. Getting hit, that's, that's kind of normal, getting your move blocked, I, I've seen it, moving forward. Moving forward gives you meter. This encourages playing right up in people's faces with very active playstyles, and combining all of these things together means that people get meter really fast in this game. And because meter is in abundance, it encourages people to spend like white people at a target Black Friday sale. In Third Strike, lots of interesting decision making with EX moves doesn't really take place for me until I'm deep into the first bar of meter. This is because spending when I don't know when I'm next going to have it is scary, and since supers carry over from round to round, that shit's a commitment. In gear, a new round starts, and it's got 
gone. That hard work doesn't mean shit anymore. It encourages a use it or lose it mentality. It's game design that encourages a playstyle much like Doom 2016, but the applications are so varied that whilst the playstyle is encouraged, it's not required. If you want to save your meter and spend it all on one massive combo, go right ahead. But if you also want to set up an insane projectile wall, that's also as fair an option. The game is keen to give you tools, but wants to let you choose how to use them. All right, eight tools. Who cares if you can't really do anything interesting with them? Boom, I know you've been watching this game and you've seen it already, but I need you to realize, do you realize how freeing Roman Cancel is as a system? Oh my fucking days. Okay, let's calm down a bit. So, Roman Cancel allows you to cancel the large majority of moves for exchange for some meter. If it's a move that's hit, it's 50% of your meter, whereas if it's whiffed, it's 25%. The most dull thing about this from a game theory standpoint is that it has use in combos and because the majority of the combos that you already have will have set points in which you intend to use Roman Cancel, it's not very dynamic, but I mean, it's it's still pretty hype. I've done this same Coon combo for like 200 hours and I still think it's fucking sick. This isn't really my field of expertise, well, none of this is, but I can't really find the words to describe why this is such a satisfying system in the middle of combos, but I'm basically just a crackhead for Roman Cancels. But where the Roman Cancel gets really interesting to me is right here in the neutral. You can cancel projectiles and step kicks and just loads of weird shit to make dirty mix-ups from a distance, close gaps, just cover yourself because you weren't really paying the most amount of attention and now you need to pick up the pieces of your awful game plan. It's a mechanic that holds multiple layers and means that among different players you're going to have more or less significance based on their ability to utilize that system. A new player might want to use it to see big move go brr, a mid-level player might want to use it to avoid loss, and I don't really know what high-level players want from it because I mean that shit ain't me. And the way that people will think about this meter is where you can separate it between an active choice and a flowchart that's been made by somebody else, which is in itself still kind of a choice you're choosing to flowchart with it. And there's another game with this mechanic, but it's emphasized much less. Street Fighter 4 has the focus attack dash cancel or FADC, which lets you cancel specials. It's a great mechanic for the same reason as a Roman cancel in that its purpose, importance, and application changes within the level of skill that you're playing at and how much time you want to put into that mechanic. The thing that separates an FADC from Roman cancels is cost and the economy that it exists in. Every kind of FADC requires 50% meter and meter builds slow, so if you're using it, you better have a fucking reason to. Because of that, for many players, it becomes a combo mechanic and stays there forever. That's not to say that it's its only function, but until you get really deep into the game, it can be hard to understand where it's applicable outside of maximizing damage. This game also has really sick meter. I'm probably going to end up shelling SF4 for the rest of my life, but I really do think the meter is pretty smart with how you have to balance FADC, EX moves, and super. Ultra charging as fast as it does, though, can ingest my fecal matter for all I care, aka eat shit. Whilst SF4's meter fits the game that it's in, I'm glad that Guilty Gear takes this meter much further. Guilty Gear takes the approach that, well, if I've got all this meter, I want to use it, so I'ma use it, and gives you defensive choices to make alongside aggressive ones in faultless defense and dead angle attacks. Faultless is a push block that makes it so that you can't take any chip damage, and dead angle does an invincible get off me move for 50% of your meter. I think that these two systems alone are fantastic. Using faultless takes a little bit of meter at a time, so you can't just sit there and hold it down forever. This adds a second layer in the blocking thought process between is it high, low, left, right, and also now, is it worth burning the meter here? The push block also means that you can indirectly play aggressive, since now you're pushing someone away, you're cutting off options that they potentially had, but also opening them up to new ones since the distance that you've provided them with allows them new opportunities. Then, if you tie this mechanic with Dead Angle, you start to create a situation where you can ask yourself if you're going to be able to escape the pressure at all, or would it be a better idea to spend more meter immediately and put yourself back into neutral? It should also be noted that depending on the string, you can actually block a Dead Angle, so now there's an additional layer of will my opponent be able to recognize that I've done a Dead Angle. Other games also have systems like Push Block and Dead Angles, for example, Blaze Blue, Skullgirls, Them's Fighting Herds, uh, I don't really know any others off the top of my head. But not all of these are what I would deem successful applications of the systems. Let's take Them's Fighting Herds, for example. Great game, no shade, but I really don't like the exact same applications of the systems that are in this game. Push Block in this game removes chip and also, you, you know, pushes away, but it doesn't cost anything, and Cross Counter, their version of a dead angle attack, costs quite a lot. Here, it feels like the systems don't really intertwine. 
When playing them as fighting herds, I often find myself thinking, well, why don't I just push block all the time, even though that's not necessarily the right choice, because there's no immediate consequence. When you couple that with cross counter costing half a bar, I think, well, when the fuck am I ever going to use this when push blocking pushes them this far away and it's free? The reality is that these systems are both tied in their importance in working together, even though their resource is not. But without that there, I struggle to make the connection and imagine that many other players might do as well. Maybe they don't, and I've just got a small brain, but you know, you're on the Leon Massey YouTube channel, you're not on fucking Science News Weekly, it's all opinions and feelings here. Speaking of feelings, I, I can't think of a segue here, Blitz! I love this shit. Blitzing into Blitz feels so good, but the move itself is already satisfying. This is because it's kind of like a parry in Third Strike, but it costs meter and it's nothing like a parry now that I think about it. The combos that come off of these moves are normally absolutely huge, and there's also a period after a Blitz where you can cancel the stun that you're in with your own Blitz and makes for a mini game of repeated blitzing. It's fucking great, but it also serves as a system for people that want to make callouts and statements. The things that you can do with blitz most of the time you can do with any set of normals, but having the choice to turn someone else's move against them so directly with meter helps to create a greater sense of player identity. This is a defensive mechanic that serves more than just the function that it has in the game, but also as a function with player identity, and I love that. I had a man IAD blitz into me the whole game, and it worked every time, and boy did it piss me off, but I will never forget that man. Alright, Roman cancels, defensive mechanics, uh, what's left? Oh, okay. We're on the more generic stuff now. Supers. It uses half a bar of tension, which isn't inherently interesting, but it's interesting in the same way that it was in 3S, but more so. In Guilty Gear, huge damage does come from supers, but often these are max damage combos that make it so that you don't have any Okizemi after. Okizemi is the ability to attack someone as they get up with pressure or some kind of combo or some shit. Either that or the super serves as a reversal. If you remember the start of the video, this might sound familiar with, you know, that game, but it's more interesting here due to its ties with other aggressive choices. Now it becomes an act of, do I super here, or do I want to save the meter for a roaming cancel, or do I want to save it for some kind of reversal? This choice is also emphasised without burst, which is its own separate meter that you don't really need to know too much about, but to oversimplify it, it's a get out of combo free card. This helps to make choices with supers go from a very straightforward, simple system to a very complicated system due to the way that it's intertwined with the other mechanics. Supers are probably the least interesting mechanic here especially on their own, but the knock-on effects that they have with meter is very interesting. In fact, the whole point of what I've been trying to get at here is that whilst on their own, I don't think that these mechanics are very interesting, it's the fact that they're all intertwined into one system that makes them very fucking cool. The balancing act here and the way that tension all comes together makes it so that it's a system that's way greater than the sum of its parts. I guess that's it. I guess that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to instant kill. Holy fucking shit. Throw all the fucking meter away and just fucking, just win the fucking round. Who gives a fuck? Oh, just combo into it. Do it randomly. Who gives a fuck? Who, 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 who cares? Thank you for watching. If you subscribe, I can occasionally do this to your subscription box. Also Twitter and Twitch.